want to thank you all for coming this morning and for everyone who's joining us uh, via the uh, internet. So today is one of our innovation forums. I'm going to briefly go over uh, AMSO Cal and why we do this. And then I'm going to get out of the way so that the experts can come up and talk to you about um, doing uh, business not only with Mexico, but also um, some uh, opportunities for international trade that um, Elizabeth will get into in greater detail. So before I begin, I just want to uh, mention that AMSOCAL is a project um, of the USC Price Center for Economic Development. We're a nonprofit entity that's associated with the Public Policy School at the university, and we provide technical assistance to economically distressed and underserved communities. We have been around for uh, around 25 years, uh, and what we mainly do is a lot of planning and economic development work. However, uh, a couple years ago, uh, we received funding from the Department of Commerce to create something called uh, AMSOCAL. AMSOCAL is the Advanced Manufacturing Partnership for Southern California. This entire entity was created to support the aerospace and defense industry that is um, grown and provides so many middle class jobs and really become the foundation for Southern California. We have a number of different programs um, created to support and f uh, help it grow. Everything that addressing um, capital to workforce. We have programs that look at uh, the industrial base. We write reports. We have annual convenings where we bring together the primes, the subcontractors, the workforce people that support and all, um, industries, uh, universities, com uh, community colleges. Basically trying to make sure that our next generation of workers are prepared um, and also making sure that our supply chain is heard. I also man I specifically manage a program called Strengthening Competitiveness. Strengthening Competitiveness is a, pro <laughs> is a program funded by the Department of Defense. The Department of Defense um, f realizes that a lot of our small manufacturers in Southern California in the supply chain have a proportion of work that is heavily on the defense side, where to be maybe 80-20. That's a challenge because when the defense budget drops, that also means that those businesses are disproportionately affected. And it's a national security issue. We want to have the capacity to manufacture in the event of a national emergency to be able to support our war fighters and support the government, right? support what we're doing. So the Department of Defense wanted uh, us to find ways to diversify the supply chain so that ratio gets closer to 50-50 or, or ideally you're doing more um, non-defense work than you are doing defense work. So that if something does happen, you're there and, and you have the capacity to, to um, work on behalf of um, the Defense Department. We have four main products in this program. We do business growth, we do um, branding and marketing, we do succession planning, and we do access to capital. We found that in working with the businesses and talking with these small manufacturers, those were the four core issues that they needed help with. Um, so if you're interested in that program, if you'd like more information, please let me know. I'd be happy to talk to with you a little bit more about that later. Um, the key thing, and uh, this slide is important, um, because it kind of lets you know and clues you into the competitive advantage that we have here in Southern California. Several years ago, um, there was a program called IMCP, which is the Investment in Manufacturing Communities Program that was created to start fo focusing on regional um, concentrations of manufacturing. What was happening in different parts of the country where there's a competitive advantage, where there's a concentration of type, specific types of manufacturers that um, we could continue to grow. Right? Because not everyone's going to build aerospace all over the country. There's expertise. We find that especially here in Southern California, the uh, capacity of our manufacturers far exceeds um, in terms of the quality or the ability to, to deliver on time, far exceeds most other places. Right? So we want to build on that. We want to continue to do that. And this map just shows you that um, the feds, federal government kind of created a program that looked at how that was spread out around the country, and ours is aerospace. So, recognizing that we have a strong background in aerospace, recognizing that our proximity to Mexico and to the incredible opportunities that are, are happening there, we wanted to put together this forum to make sure that our um, businesses that are here could take advantage of those opportunities for jobs, excuse me, for work. Um, production just across the border. And so in order to do that, we invited um, Javier uh, Payan from Aerospace Export Opportunity, um, excuse me, he's the Director of Economic Promotion for the Economic Development uh, Secretariat of Tijuana. 
and he can explain a little bit more about his programs and what they're doing down in the Baja and what those opportunities are. Um, so followed by that, we'll have Elizabeth Ginn um, with uh, the expert advisor with the um, California Manufacturing Techno Technology Consulting. <laughs> and she's going to talk to you more about what that means for you as the actual supplier. How do you interface with these programs? How do you, how do you actually get these contracts? And she'll talk to you a little bit more about a larger program that she does to really set up our small and medium manufacturers to start exporting around the world and take advantage of, of other market opportunities. So um, just briefly, last thing, Amsel Cal, while it's based at USC, we have a ton of partners all over Southern California. We work with other universities. We work with um, uh, cities. We work with the primes. Um, we work with anybody who's involved in this ecosystem because we want to have a comprehensive approach to growing and making sure that your businesses are able to thrive. So without any further ado, I'm going to bring up um, Javier and he will um, speak to you about exporting. Uh, thank you, for Tomas, for the invitation. We're very happy to be here. Just like, uh, let me uh, explain a little bit about myself. I'm Jerry Payan, Director for Economic Promotion and the Secretary of Economic Development of the City Government of Tijuana. Just two hours away from here, very, very close. Not too much traffic. <laughs> if you go northbound, you will have more traffic than going southbound, right? So uh, I've been working in government for almost 10 years already. I worked in the Ministry of Economy for the federal government. After that, state government, and right now in the city government, right? We focus a lot on helping companies grow in Tijuana, also in the Cali Baja region, that is South County, uh, South County, California, and Tijuana and Baja State, right? I would like to start first with uh, some videos, so that way you can see a little bit of Tijuana and see a little bit also of Baja California. Take just a few minutes to see the videos. I hope you like it. Tijuana, the border where more than 50 million people cross every year. We are a national city with more investing opportunities in the country, where our commitment for growth has been key to our development. We are experts at merging flavors from different cultures into a single dish, and we take pride in having the third part of craft beer production nationwide. With more than 35 breweries in Tijuana and numerous awards received, we have positioned ourselves as the capital of craft beer in Mexico. Spearheading in the manufacturing industry, our most competitive areas are aerospace, automotive, and medical devices. Thanks to the strategic investment and production of these sectors, we have more than 600 companies that produce world-class products. Tijuana is synonymous of opportunities for the visionaries, and here, we receive everyone with open arms. There's a land full of opportunities. A welcoming land with entrepreneurial people and a spirit of permanent innovation. A land that is dynamic, competitive, with tight international bonds. A land that is an element of success for companies already established in it. Welcome to Baja California. Having a strategic location, Baja California is Mexico's best gateway to the world. We are interconnected with all of Mexico, the U.S. and the rest of the world through a federal highway network, international freight train, the port of Ensenada, and the proximity to key logistical destinations like the port of Long Beach and development hubs such as San Diego, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Phoenix, and San Francisco. Shipping from Baja, California could be inside of the United States by land in less than an hour after leaving the premises of the companies. The electrical grid from Baja, California and the U.S. are interconnected. 
This fact, along with the development of innovative scheme of cogeneration, has proved itself in offering the best rate of industrial energy of the company, with great quality and reliability of world class. In Baja, California, water supply is plentiful and is readily available for new investments. To ensure this availability, the construction of a new high-capacity desalination plant is underway in San Quintin. This new facility will supply the state's coastal region and it will ensure that this precious resource is available for the next generations and is able to sustain our region's growth in the years to come. The relation with the United States has been a relation that emerged from organic form by the proximity and the shared resources. This relationship has evolved to solve matter of common interest, like logistic border crossing and water treaties, to become a mega region called Cala Baja that promotes binational active efforts for economic development, sustainable economic development set. Tijuana will soon have the first binational airport in the American continent. The airport will be joined with San Diego, California, with a pedestrian bridge across the border into the United States. This project is another testament of our close cooperation and ability to undertake joint projects that benefit our region as a whole. Baja California has a world-renowned cuisine whose originality has earned that distinction with the term Baja Med. And thanks to a geographical location that shares latitudes with major wine regions of the world, the Guadalupe Valley is the top wine producer in Mexico. Tourist and entertainment options ranging from ecotourism and breathtaking panoramas, professional sports, vibrant nightlife and a growing artistic and cultural scene. And with just a short trip across the border, anyone can enjoy the nearby cities that the United States offer. The medical sector in Baja, California is well known for its professionalism, high-end technology, and its warm and friendly service. Our world-class hospitals, clinics, and medical practices receive more than 2 million international patients each year. Baja California's rich natural resources give way to very diverse economy that also includes a strong renewable energy sector, commercial and sport fishing, and a growing mining industry. One factor that companies always stand in Baja California is our people. With one of the highest rates in English language skills and a natural bicultural background, Executives are delighted to find a workforce that is easily played in an international environment, has a high percentage of college education, and a positive attitude to solve problems. Today, Baja California has high growth strategic sectors, companies that join the Mexican talent with foreign venture capital, and advance technology transfer and grow stronger as the most competitive investment destination and the cradle of the next generation of cultural and economic benchmarks of Mexico. Because of our pro-business environment without labor disputes, comprehensive infrastructure, multicultural lifestyle, highly qualified human resources, international logistics integration, highly competitive costs, entrepreneurial vision and culture of innovation, unmatched strategic location, aerospace industry leadership. Baja California is the ideal investment destination in Mexico. Welcome. Tijuana, the door to America, right? The closest city to Asia and the biggest ports. Now, uh, some quick facts of Tijuana. We're number one in North American medical device deployment. As you know, 
aerospace, medical device, electronics, and also automotive. They're like collateral kind of sectors. Sometimes you can work with the aerospace industry, but you can also work with the medical device industry, and you can also work with the automotive industry, right? So they're everything like collateral sectors. Uh, also is the number one number on aerospace and defense companies in Mexico. Uh, Baja and Tijuana has the biggest concentration of co aerospace companies in all Mexico, more than Querétaro, right? You probably heard about Querétaro. It's, we have a big company also in Querétaro, but here in Tijuana we have the more concentration where the cluster works together, right? When a small company uh, pub, uh, supplies the medium company and they work together. We have more than 50 years in experience in manufacturing. Since the Maquiladora started, the Maquiladora program in Mexico, we we're the first pioneers in Tijuana to have the first Maquiladora. Actually, the first Maquiladora in all Mexico, it's in Tijuana, and it's in the aerospace sector. It does uh, bottoms for the uh, NASA, for all the NASA spaceships. They do all the bottoms since, since 1956, I think they started. So the first maquiladora in all Mexico, it's in Tijuana, it's still working, it's still open. So, wow, it's a big example of what we can do in Tijuana, right? More than 60 industrial areas in Tijuana. 21% of the graduate students received STM degrees. The, with the say, second highest export value of all the states in Mexico, is the closest city to North American markets. With strategic location, we have more than 45 uh, free trade agreements with all the world. So Tijuana, it's a, it's a big bridge in, in, in exporting and importing merchandise from all over the world. Our Tijuana's economy, our gross domestic product is about 17 uh, US billion dollars a year. It's a big, big economy that's moving forward and or growing each year. Over 8 billion in the free trade direct investments in the last 10 years making it one of the top five destinations in the nation for investment. The lowest unemployment rates in the country with average of 3.5% in the last 10 years. Our border dynamic. The Cali Baja region has a population of more than 6 million people here, what is in California and Baja California. This market is the third largest conurbation of the west coast of North America and the largest cross-border urban agglomeration in the western hemisphere. This region has a 230 mi billion economy that represents over 2.8 million jobs. This in the Cali Baja region. Uh, with the principal economy sector being manufacturing. Manufacturing is the most important sector in the Cali Baja. When we work together, each day uh, containers of merchandise, of supplements, cross the border each day from San Diego to Tijuana, from LA to Mexicali. So we're always working in the border, right? The anchor of the cross-border regional economy here is the assembly of industrial goods, as well as tourism and retail trade. Over 50 million cross the border each year and more than 2 million trucks carry goods back and forth, back and forth. An estimated 50,000 Mexicans commute to work in San Diego region on a daily or weekly basis. They are able to cross at the three ports of entry connecting the two cities. We have three ports of entry and we're working on the fourth one, right? It's going to be called Otay Mesa 2. So uh, we, we're working very much on our border with the federal government from the United States and also the federal government of Mexico to work this together for all the goods can cross faster, right? So we can connect companies from the United States to Mexico. Biotech, tourism, service, and defense military are one of the most important sectors right now in Tijuana. Our key industrial sectors are, as you see, aerospace, automotive, medical, and electronics. There's a few of the most important companies that are established there in Tijuana. With aerospace, we have 87 companies and counting. And automotive, we have more than 55 companies as Toyota, as Hyundai, Autoleaf. Medical devices, we have more than 66 companies with like Mel Will Allen, Medtronic, Nipro, DJ Global. And electronics, we have Samsung, Foxconn, Plantronics, Kyocera. And our space sector has more than 50 years working in Tijuana. It's the largest concentration of aerospace companies in Mexico. More than the 60% of the companies has an IS 9100 certification and a NATCAP certification. Right? The workforce has more than 20,000 people working in this sector directly. Probably more than 60,000 working indirectly in this sector. Uh, we design, assembly, and manufacture an MRO just in Tijuana. No? We have new and expansion projects. Uh, last week, they just announced that Safran bought Zodiac Aerospace and they're going to 
invest more than 20 million in growing the company. Pollo Jara Zodiac Aerospace, they're building interiors of the airplanes. All the, I think it's uh, carbon fiber, I think this is the interior for the planes. They're building there in Tijuana, right? Our space companies, probably you heard of Icon. Just like three years ago, they established in Tijuana, they start to build the small planes. They're more like hobby kind of planes. Probably heard of them. You can you can uh, fly in, in in the lake or you can fly in, in, in the city. They're starting to build them there in Tijuana and they're looking for suppliers actually. They're gonna be this 15 and 16 of November in Rosarito in our event called Baja Aerospace Supplier Forum. So they're looking for suppliers. You can probably go there and see what they're exactly they're looking for, which parts, and probably you can supply to them. Another important company is as Eaton, Esterline, Parker, Cubic, Barry, Barry Avenue. It's a big, big company. Rock and Collins, Zodiac Aerospace, as mentioned before. Um, outstanding demand. This is what the, these companies are looking for. They're looking for aluminum and metal oils, advancing composite materials, plastic parts, thermal formant, optical fiber, foam pieces, external hoses and other materials, fiberglass, wire and harnesses, it's always a big, big supply, wires, fur and natural or poultry parts, synthetic microfiber and mixed fabrics, precision machinating, design services, aircraft electronic parts, material stamping, metal parts casting, modeling and flight simulation. Estimated annual market demand is at $1 billion of these suppliers. So this is a big opportunity for all the people that work in the airspace sector and they're looking to sell in the south of the border. Well, we have a lot of demand there requesting all the companies from the airspace sector. And each year they're gonna request more things, more innovation, more technology. So we need to work together, all the industry in the both side of the border to deliver these supplies. Also, medical device sector is a very collateral sector to aerospace, automotive, so they work together, right? Uh, Tijuana leads the medical device industry in Mexico. It's the number one hub in the industry in all Latin America. More than 50 companies are established here in Tijuana. The workforce is more, almost than 35 specialized employees there. Tijuana Cluster, together with San Diego and the U.S., integrate the most sophisticated and diverse national device region in North America. This is what we can do when we work together, United States and Mexico, to become the number one, right? So automotive sector is another important, important uh, sector. As you know, aerospace, a lot of supplies from the aerospace sector are f come from the automotive sector, right? So Toyota, Toyota is one of the biggest companies in Tijuana building all the, the trucks, the Tacoma trucks. We're the number one, how you say, manufacturing of Toyota Tacoma trucks in the world. It's one of the biggest companies that supplies all the United States with Tacoma trucks. So it's a very, very impressive company they have there. Uh, we have high skill employees, huge automotive aftermarket suppliers, and growing off-road businesses with more than 25 companies. Off-road business is a sector that is growing so quickly, so fast these last years because a lot of people are looking for that, looking to tune their cars, change their parts, go off-road. So it's a big sector that's growing very quickly. Electronics, as you know, we used to be the capital of the TVs in the world, Tijuana. All the TVs in the world, they were uh, building in Tijuana back in the day. Um, right now, everything has been developing, more software, m less hardware. So we're still being the capital of the TV, but just in America, <laughs> not in the world anymore. So more than 200 companies operate Tijuana Manufacturing. Uh, building flat screen, televisions, cell phones, computer, home appliance, uh, iPads, all that, inform all that um, s hardware is built in Tijuana. All OEMs have changed to platforms like LCD and D DLP. Right now we have the 4K and the coming soon the 8K. <laughs> They're starting Samsung starting to build the 8K resolution TV. Impressive, very impressive. Workforce, more than 70,000 people. Why Tijuana, the closest to Asia, closest to North American markets, infrastructure and communication development, young and educated service oriented people. A lot of people speak English, that's a big advantage. You don't have to learn Spanish, but if you want to, you can do it. <laughs> but it's, it's, you can speak English in Tijuana, everybody will understand. Knowledge and technology transfer cap capabilities and manufacturing flexibility and a pro-business environment, cluster development orientation. 
important infrastructure project, as I mentioned before, the Otay Port of Entry 2. It's a project that is building. So it's going to be a border entry when you can pay like, I think, $2 or $3 to cross the line without waiting, right? It's going to be like a toll road, but faster and cheaper. San Diego, optimal place for business, and Tijuana. This is my information. I make it real quickly because I want to hear about you, your questions, so I can help you out a little bit more. I don't know if we have internet on, the, on this computer. I would like to show you some websites. You can find a little bit more information, more specific things, with some white papers in the aerospace industry, some really more articles of specialties. No? Yes, OK. So first, uh, I want to show you our website of the Tijuana city. It's called uh, invest.tijuana.gov.mx. Well, this is the city of Tijuana government website. I have to go the most, <laughs> the other way around it. This is our website of our office, the Economic Development Department office. And here you go, just invest in Tijuana. Well, it can't be reached, but <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you always want to show something new, it doesn't work. <laughs> but well, that's uh, our city website. Now we have the, the this website from the state government. It's called Invest in Baja. I hope this one works. Okay, it does work. This is from the state government. If you click here, aerospace, you'll have a big important uh, white papers on the aerospace industry. A lot, a lot of information, the company, statistics, all that you need, right? Here on this website, you can go there and look for more information if you want to. Also, uh, I would like to put the Baja Aero event that is coming this November 15 and 16 in Rosarito. It's BajaAero.com. Here you have a big companies uh, in this event. It's the second Aerospace Forum and Expo 2018. Just 29 days for the event. It's going to be in Rosarito, just 10 minutes away from Tijuana in the Baja Center next to the beach. Beautiful place. I want to know if here are the companies that are already participating here. Our sponsors, Tecma, government offices, universities. This is the prices today, $55. Very cheap event. Here's if you want to register, here's their information. Info at arroba aerospace.org or eventos at businessconnection.com. This is the phone number if you want to call and to register for the B2B business and the expo. Yes, you need to register to offer your, 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 what you, your supply. So that way they can do the matchmaking when the companies depend on what they're looking for, right? So they can arrange the meetings at times. Uh, you mentioned uh, LA and Long Beach as a major port. Are there other ports in, in, in Baja, California? Or? Yes. One of the biggest ones is in Ensenada. It's just 40 minutes away from Tijuana. I don't know if I mentioned it. Probably the video did, right? The video show. But yeah, we have a port, big, big port in Ensenada. That's one of the biggest comes from Asia. Goes to Asia. Thank you. Another question for you. Does your office assist uh, aerospace suppliers if they do or are successful with getting a contract to work with uh, one of the companies based in Mexico, do you assist them with the logistics in terms of the access through uh, or understanding um, how to? We can help them out. I recommend probably a custom broker, a logistic company. There's more experience with that. Uh, but yeah, we can help them out arranging some meetings with those custom brokers or the logistics. But as, as the first uh, consultant, we can help them out with it, the information. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the benefits of exporting for our manufacturers, and then we will talk about um, specifically the Baja Aerospace. For those of you that are not familiar, 
We, you know, California sits right on the California Baja border, and that industrial, uh, that the Baja industrial sector represents some 500 multinationals, of which I understand about 60% of them are US based. So, there, if you're already doing business with a multinational, US multinational that has an operation in Baja, do not assume that th there's going to be an automatic connection. What I would encourage you to do is go ahead and let, say, Honeywell. I have a, I, actually, I have a client who um, I gave her the list of the 82 aerospace companies in uh, Mexicali. And she had noticed that they already do business with 12 of those companies. What you'd want to do is, for example, Honeywell say, hey, I understand you have a subsidiary in Mexico. We, we already support you. Can, is, what's the opportunity of, of providing supplier opportunities to your facility in um, Baja? Because don't assume that, they, that they're automatically connected. In addition, as, as uh, Javier was sharing, you want to go ahead and establish local re uh, relationships with the procurement teams in Baja so that those relationships are developed if they have immediate needs and they know you and they know that you, all, that you work with Honeywell already, it's going to open up an opportunity. So we just need to look at it from different perspectives. Um, basically, I'm just going to present some facts. Uh, how many of you are already exporting? Okay, California companies are sitting on tremendous opportunity. So uh, this is just, and, and in fact, our U.S. manufacturers are sitting on opportunity. It's interesting that uh, less than 39% of our manufacturers actually export on a regular basis. Okay, of those that do, most of them are 57%. They estimate chip two, less than five markets. And typically it's one or two. And most often, that business is being driven, it's being pulled by the overseas buyers. So if, you're, if you are already exporting, could you do more business with that particular company? And also, could, would they have interest in other products? I mean, if, if, if companies are coming to you and you're getting, you're getting internet inquiries, this is an opportunity to build out some business. And then just to, to show, in California alone, manufactured goods, we exported $172 billion worth of goods. It's a lot of goods. And uh, as it says here, small businesses comprise 96% of all exporters, so size is not is, is not the issue. It's it's what you're producing and who knows about it and how do you how do you get more visibility? This is just some uh, some trade statistics up at the top. It's the U.S. Um, it's the total exports was out of the U.S. was 1.5 uh, trillion dollars. If you'll notice, about 74 percent of all trade goes to about the top 25 countries. From, from the lower half, it's, it's our top uh, trading partners with the state of California. If you notice, Mexico's number one, Canada's number two, China's number three. So we have, and, and if you notice, Mexico, we export about 15.5%. All those markets, we could increase significantly. This is what we're doing predominantly on an ad hoc basis. So I just wanted to share that with you. As far as what gets exported out of, out of the US, anything and everything. Um, obviously, today we're talking about aerospace and, and defense, but you have aircraft, including parts, engines, you have parts of airplanes, helicopters, but also electronics, medical devices, food processing, chemicals, anything to do with measuring capabilities. And because we are so close to the Baja industrial sector, um, you also have the opportunity to, it's all about speed to market. So if, if these companies have supplier needs and they know that you exist, there's, there is potential opportunity for you there. Uh, don't underestimate the Made in USA label. That's, it's well recognized throughout the world, uh, the quality and label. So, so that's something to take into consideration. If you're as made in California companies, that gives Garner's even more interest. So leverage the two that make the most sense for you. This is just something that's of interest here. We've, we know the growth is going to be in emerging markets for the most part. That's uh, you know Europe and the U.S. 
are, predom are, are mature markets, so there's not going to be as much growth. But if you see from this, this slide, the Asia-Pacific region, Latin America and Africa is going to provide a lot of opportunity into the future. So these are, are things that we need to be looking at. My question to you is 95% of the world's consumers lie outside of the U.S. We make up only 5% of the world's market. So given the, the expansive opportunity to access new customers and expand sales growth, why don't more U.S. manufacturers sell or export their equipment, components, products, and services into global markets? And we sit um, you know, near a major global market. So that's, if you're not thinking about that, I would encourage you to think about this. Con misconceptions for why companies don't export. I'm too, I'm too small, it's too risky, it's too expensive, it's too complicated. And those to some extent are true. Exporting is achievable. Most companies, I would say, it's because they don't know how to move forward. So if you have unique products and with a roadmap or a strategy, you can increase sales and we can help you to maximize those opportunities. So there again, just to reiterate, 95% of the world's consumer markets are outside the U.S. I'll just look at all the development. These countries, these emerging markets, they have to develop their infrastructure. Also, as the economies are expanding, the, the uh, people, the workers, are also getting access to more disposable income, and they want good products. We have an opportunity to really provide uh, a lot of uh, products to, to the world. And don't underestimate the two-thirds of the world's purchasing power also lies outside the U.S. As I tell people, only three reasons to export. Even if you think it's a little bit difficult or complicated, when you, set, when you started your businesses, it wasn't easy, but you did it, and we can help you. The only reasons to be involved in exporting is A, access to new customers, two, increase sales and boost prof profit. And I think most of you are interested in doing that. So that's, that's the motivation to get involved in exporting, to take the time to learn how to do it right. So building into the future, one of the things that we would ask you is, how do you see your company growing in the next three years? You know, are your sales, if obviously if the U.S. market is doing really well, you're going to be focused on the U.S. But if you start to see some maturing there, perhaps uh, proactively you want to start looking into global markets and which global markets would you be expanding into? Um, we are, I, I, I as export advisor facilitate a program called Export Tech, which I'll talk a little bit about here. But the idea is if you have a plan, a basic roadmap, it's going to help you make the, the process a little bit easier. And also, it's going to, you're going to be able to respond more adeptly to foreign buyer inquiries. We have a lot of companies that, that participate in trade missions and they get access to opportunities but then they don't know what to do with them. If you have a plan and a strategy, you can start to be more proactive that, uh, that way. Also, you're going to be able to minimize risk, which in global trade, you want to make sure that, that you play the game right because mistakes can be costly. So take advantage of the resources and there are a lot of resources here. And the whole, the whole motivation is to get you to access uh, sales growth in the global markets. This export tech program that, that I facilitate, what we do is we bring four to six companies together. We bring them together in teams. And I'll go through that. But basically what we're doing is providing strategic focus and a structured process so that you can create an actionable export growth plan that you take out and that you implement. And along the way, we get you connected to players that can help you with financing, with logistics, with uh, you know, international or uh, intellectual property. The, the whole goal is to, to achieve accelerated uh, export sales growth faster, with less risk, and much more profitably. Okay, this is an overview of the program. It's basically a 24-hour program, one full day every four to five weeks. Um, we basically, the first one is strategic focus. In between, you're going to do, you're going to work on what markets make the most sense. Of course, we're going to include the Baja Aerospace because it's right nearby and it's a natural market. In the, the second session, we're going to look at 
what do you see, what does the group see as, as gaps and obstacles, and the program is customized to what your needs are, not what I think you have, but what the needs are and what the, what the um, uh, obstacles are. And then in, by the third session, you will have created an actionable, an actionable export growth plan, which you get to talk out with a group of, of professionals so that you leave with, with a plan. That's the deliverable. However, if you see, what we really want you to do is implement that plan because that's where the growth comes. That's where the opportunity, you're going to be able to, to compete more effectively and, and have the resources so that you can not only access these sales, but also be able to deliver. And along the, along the way, we get you connected to export resources. Notice, the well, I deliver the program together with the U.S. Commercial Service. How many of you are familiar with the U.S. Commercial Service? Okay, basically this is, they are your marketing arm to the world, but they need you to be prepared so that when they get you connected, you can go ahead and start to sell. Global e-commerce is becoming more important, so we have some programs there, trade shows, trade missions. There is actual California, uh, what's called California Step Funding. Uh, you can access about $3,000 per company on a first come, first serve basis, and that is, uh, supports participation in a trade show, possibly translation, uh, foreign translation of materials, or, or putting a web page in, in another language, in Spanish, for example. If you need help with financing, knowing about the Export-Import Bank, that you could actually get foreign credit insurance so that um, you can sell on a, on a, a higher basis. You could sell more product with, with less restrictions. And in the event of a non-payment, 90-95% uh, of that transaction would be protected. So that's, that's an option. Also, the SBA uh, provides export financing. If you are, if, if you, as production grows, if you have to buy new machinery, if you have to buy more space, then uh, they, they will work with you and your bank to provide medium-term financing. So these are all options that are available to you. And then, of course, freight forwarders, you have to be able to deliver the product. That's key, and especially in global trade when we work on a just-in-time environment. And then trade attorneys, you get connected if you need help with trademarks or IPR issues. So those are things that we'll talk about. The benefit, what we're looking to do is help accelerate your speed to market, get you connected, which provides time savings, and that's, that's critical. So you're not, you're not lost, you're, you're not frustrated, you're getting connected in a timely manner to, to take advantage of these opportunities. And the key here is reducing risk and increasing your sales success. So there again, the focus is customers, sales, and profit, and, you, and companies can achieve that. As you're exporting, these are just some of the examples of companies that I've worked with that have one company, one year, uh, one market, and actually it was Mexico, increased sales 1,200%. And they were already exporting to 20 markets, but they were focused. Another company expanded, it went from 15, 16 countries to 31 plus countries. One company we worked with, 50% uh, of their manufacturing capacity was underutilized maximized. So these are just things that you can do by exporting. And this is, uh, this is one of, of the companies that went through the program. This is Richard Brent, CEO of, of Luro Electronics, which is, an, uh, they do um, audio security monitoring. This is the company that grew 1200%. Yeah, it, he was just amazed at how much he could grow. He, he got strategic about his plan. He worked with the U.S. Commercial Service. They went on a trade mission to Mexico and got, and got connected. What I will say is the benefit with the, with the U.S. trade missions and working with the U.S. Commercial Service, and we can help you in, in the Baja region, is they can open doors that maybe typically you on your own wouldn't be able to do. And then also with working with the economic development in Tijuana and in Baja or Mexicali, those are other doors that can be opened. But that's that government to government uh, relationship provides opportunities for you. But the, the key here is if you have unique products, if you have extra production capacity, if you're interested in expanding, you should be looking at exporting as a, as a way to, 
to, to grow your business. But in doing so, you need to understand the process. You want to develop a good plan or a good strategy that will evolve. And then you want to utilize all the available resources. And I'm here to tell you, we have a lot of resources. AMP SoCal, the US Commercial Service, the Exim Bank, there are a lot of resources that, that you might not be familiar with. We get you connected so that you can, you can grow your business. Just some, uh, this is just some statistics across. This is uh, on average companies that do create a plan and actually implement it. They can grow 500 to 700,000. In California, I've seen anywhere from 3,000 to well over a million dollars, okay? In fact, I just had a company that, that went through the program two years ago and they just, earlier this year, they just signed a million dollar contract. So now, having said that, you have to work, you have to have your certifications in place, you have to have, uh, you need to work the market, but the payoff can be quite significant. And you're all, you're all uh, able to do that. Uh, this, this export tech program, if there's anyone interested, I'm happy to talk to them. I don't have a program in place. We just finished one for the city of Los Angeles. And actually, we had a company that drove from San Diego to Los Angeles to participate because the company was already exporting to six markets. And as I shared with you, um, they, they didn't have a plan, so they, were, they wanted to work the plan. And what my question to them is when we were trying to identify which are the key markets to focus on, I asked the question, who's driving the business to the six markets? And the comment was, oh, we're not doing that. So right there, they can build out their business just from within the business that they're doing right now. So they can expand either more to, to the market and also expand the uh, product line. So let's see. With respect to Baja, as Javier shared, key sectors, aerospace. I know those of you in the aerospace, you tend to work both aerospace and maybe medical, aerospace and automotive. Keep in mind, these are key sectors, aer the aerospace, automotive, the electronics, medical device, metal, metal and machinery, lots of opportunity. Um, there is a Baja trade tour that San Diego is doing. It's, uh, this, it's gonna be on the 25th. If anyone is interested, let me know. I can put you in contact with them. It's gonna cost you $35, and one day you meet at, what is it, San Isidro? The, the, you will park your car there. You will have, you'll be escorted for a day to two, facil uh, two facilities. I believe one is medical and one is uh, dialyte. They will have procurement teams available. So it's hosted for one whole day. So it's one day, $35. If you wanna see, get a feel of doing business in Tijuana and actually meet with companies, great way to do it. I encourage anyone to do that and I'm happy to connect you. And then um, as was shared, the Baja Aerospace Forum is coming up November 15th and 16th. So that's, here's an opportunity. This is, and this is in your handout, to learn more, uh, the export, the U.S. Commercial Service, if you go to export.gov, look at, uh, put in CCG, I think it's export.gov forward slash CCG, look for Mexico, and then under best prospects, look up aerospace, and they'll list a lot of information there that, that can get you uh, thinking about uh, about where you want to go, how you want to get connected. And Sylvia Cardenas, I've actually met her. She's the uh, actual trade specialist based in Mexico City that supports the aerospace sector because she can help to connect um, as you go into, further into Mexico. Querétaro, uh, Nuevo León, that. For Baja, um, who is it? Aaron Davidson at the U.S. Commercial Service Office in San Diego can help to, to expand, to, to get you connected. Also, if you've heard the name Jason Sproul, he in Los Angeles, and I believe Orange County, is the connection. It's the aerospace uh, specialist. They work by sectors, so they have a lot of uh, experience. And then on the right-hand side, you'll just see, these are just some websites that were posted on export.gov. So you can browse those to get some more information. You can also Google the Baja Aerospace, because I, I know that there are at least 82 uh, companies in the region, 
and many more. Uh, I've been to Honeywell, UTC, uh, GKN, Eaton, all these companies are, uh, they've all expressed interest in having supplier needs. So there's opportunity and they would, the, the comment is they, they would like to work with California manufacturers, but sometimes we're not easy to connect. So if we can, if we can help you to make those connections, there is opportunity. That's my contact information. And what questions can I answer for you? Uh, we are AS901 uh, and ISO 1345, uh, so... You're certified. Okay, which is very good. That's, uh, thank you for sharing that. That's one thing. You want to be AS9100, whatever it is, it's not compliant. You need to be certified, and that opens up, that opens up doors. The program that I have, I, I need a minimum of four companies to, to position a, a, a program, and I can do it in San Diego. I've, I've done it every, anywhere from San Diego up to Fresno, out in the city of uh, Corona. So it's just bringing together four companies that want to go through this program. Now, we can adapt it specifically for the, for the, uh, the Baja sector. So then the focus would be bringing in, for example, freight forwarders that have expertise in that area, um, you know, know, getting a better understanding of how to do business, maybe bringing, bringing some people up from, from Baja directly. So that's one option. If you're looking at you know, just globally, then it's, we look at the whole, uh, the, the whole overview. And then, as I said, between session one and two, what we're going to encourage you in, your, in building out your roadmap is what are the top one to three markets that you'd like to expand into. And keep in mind, it's a living document, so it may change. But, but at least you start focused. And I have had, I had a company, um, went through the program, identified nine objectives, and was focusing on one series of markets, and it changed. But what was amazing is he hit every one of those nine objectives. And this was a company that had 50% underutilized production. And I'm happy to share that today they had to actually go out and buy more space. So that's, I mean, this is, you may not want to, to expand that aggressively, but you can. The other thing is um, you just kind of, you need to think about how much space that you do have. I would encourage you, if you're going to pursue this route, you want to stay committed to the market and then have some, some, some uh, staff that can help you, either one person that's going to be focused on working with the customers. Another way to build, uh, to build the relationship is if you're going to trade shows domestically, look at who's coming to visit you, uh, you know, from, from overseas, because a lot, of, a lot of the introductions can be started right here, because this is the world venue for a lot of the trade shows. So if you can meet people here, it, it opens up, uh, I, would, I would encourage you, you know, meet them here, start the dialogue, because you don't have to necessarily, at some point you'll have to go overseas, but you don't have to go overseas initially. Take advantage. And there again, the U.S. Commercial Service, they have what they call international buyer programs. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe I just saw something that there's going to be something called Discover Markets for the aerospace sector. So that would be something that you're interested in. And, um, Javier, the first step for um, engaging the, the supply chain that you have in Baja might be that conference that you mentioned earlier. Yes, I think it's a great opportunity to go and visit the event, see what companies are participating, what are they demanding. I think that's the first step, right? To go there and see what they're doing. And after that, probably arrange some meeting one-to-one -to, -one to see what certifications you need to have because it's very important to have certifications just to provide to the airspace industry. So you need to have certifications. So it's, it's very important that you take the time to go discover Baja. It's very close, just two hours away. You can go at 8 a.m., maybe about 2 or 3, you'll, you'll be back to LA. On this trade show, this trade event that's going to be on October 5th, that's the one day, that's they meet at, I think traditionally we've met at 8 o'clock in the morning. They'll have you back to the, to the border at like 5, between 5 and, and 5.30. And the last time we did it, there was a group of 14 of us. 
we crossed over. It took us less than two minutes to cross the border. It's, it's amazing how, how uh, fluid the whole, the whole process can be. Javier, I had a question specifically about the actual demand in Baja, California, in terms of the specific supplier needs. My understanding as I was doing research for this particular workshop was that there are a, uh, there's a, a big backlog in terms of the OEMs in Mexico and in terms of their fulfillment. And I was wondering, um, with that specifics, how are they looking and targeting suppliers here in the U.S.? My understanding was that's the purpose for wanting to um, reach out to suppliers here in the U.S. is to help supplement what is deficient in uh, Mexico right now to help fulfill on those OEM contracts in terms of the backlog. Um, and these are the areas that they're most in, in need of. Is, is this what they're looking for? They're trying to target? Do they have a time frame on their growth? Because I did also read that you're 14th right now in terms of aerospace manufacturing countries. But by 2020, they expect that you'll be at number nine and number 10, which is a huge jump between now and then. It's just two years from now to jump that far up. So I was just wondering the target area or timeline, if you had any information about that in terms of the aerospace industry. Uh, not at this moment, but yeah, it's expected to, that the growth will be for probably double the size of companies we have for 2020. Uh, why is that? Because uh, a lot of the companies established already in Tijuana, they're growing so fast. As I mentioned before, Safran bought Zodiac and is investing $20 million. Eton is also investing next year, I think, 5 or $6 million. So all the companies that are already established there, they're growing so much. So because of their growing there, they're gonna probably double the, 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 the companies they're gonna come because they're starting to suppliers they're starting to bring suppliers here to Tijuana because they wanna be close to the OEMs, right? Also um the OEMs select their suppliers and the suppliers decide if they wanna go to Tijuana or not. But the thing is they, they build sometimes small things, there's they're complicated to build, so they prefer to be close to their suppliers, right? So that's why companies are still going to Tijuana. Um, regarding the demands, uh, this is a few demands we heard about the companies and the events they participate, right? And the last events of last year, this is some of the things they require. But also their companies they probably require something else that we don't have it there. So it's very important to get close to the company, to really work with them. In the aerospace sector, you need to work very together with the suppliers, with the OEMs, to really... Um, give what they require, right? Innovation and technology is growing each, each year very fast, so it's important to be close to the companies. Uh, also, uh, the headquarters of the OEMs sometimes are here in the United States, as Elizabeth mentioned before. So sometimes it's closer, to, if you're in New York and the, or the headquarters in New York can go together to the purchasing department and start working from here to see, oh, uh, my headquarters is in Los Angeles, I would like to to sell you in Baja. So sometimes you can start working here in America with them, right? Also another uh, OEM headquarters are in, uh, in England. So sometimes they're not really in Tijuana, but if you're close to Tijuana, you should take the time and go there and see why you can work together with those facilities there in Tijuana. But normally the headquarters are in America or England and another country, right? question to follow up on that. As we were putting out and doing outreach for this particular workshop, we did hear from some small manufacturers that they had a negative experience in the 90s dealing with maquiladores and that they weren't sure if this was something that they wanted to even pursue or weren't even thinking about because the negative experience they might have gone through by way of being, um, being recruited to relocate their facilities down there uh, or uh, some of their operations, whereas we're speaking more of taking the opportunity for suppliers who are based here, located here, and who have capacity to be able to provide those supplier, be a supplier and be part of the supply chain. Um, have you heard that or how are you overcoming any negative um, feedback or response you might have had from American companies in the past who have dealt with or tried to deal with the Cleodores like in the early 90s? Because I remember when I was working at the LA Economic Development Corporation, we had a great push from, um, from uh, uh, you know, uh, over the border to try to get more of our companies to relocate there. Well, um, I don't know, the markets always are changing, right? Like in 2009, a lot of companies closed and they go to China, but they're coming back to, to America again, right? They're coming back to Tijuana. So sometimes the market change, sometimes the politics change, but I think that Maquilador is a great concept. You can save more than 30, 40% just building something in Tijuana, right? 
than to building in the United States. And the big advantage of that is the American people can buy something more cheaper, right? Because that, this is where the saving goes. The saving really directs close to the customer, not probably to the to the how you say the manufacturer, or the owner of the company. It, it goes directly to the customer. So uh, I don't remember about what happened in the '90s. Uh, the big example is what happened in 2006, 2007, 2008, when startup companies going to China because oh, China is giving a lot of incentives. But right now they're returning back to Me to, to Mexico and going returning back to America. Why? Because China is so far away. Uh, it's more complicated negotiating with Chinese people. Um, sometimes the quality is not good enough. Sometimes you want to be just in time. They want to have, how you say, um, high quality, high innovation. People that speak English. So I think that. It's, uh, Mexico and Tijuana, it's a big advantage. And we were so close to it here in California, we should take advantage of that. Last question for me. Well, I just want to ask, do you have any examples, though, of companies maybe you could share after the fact that we could share with our suppliers here of existing suppliers that are based here in the U.S. that are doing work with Mexican companies so that we can show that this is an example of a company who's done it. They've done it successfully. These are some of the roadblocks they may have encountered in the beginning, but this is how they overcame them to show that it can be done in terms of looking at aerospace suppliers expanding their markets into Mexico. That's the, that's the, the, the best uh, marketing material really is to see somebody else who's done it before me and can say, yeah, it works. And it's helped, like uh, Elizabeth said, increase my customers, my profits, and and uh, uh, you know, my, my um, suppliers, I mean, my income. I think UTC Aerospace well, is, is a company established in Mexicali, right? But I think this is a sexual story because uh, they have operation in San Diego. So they open a manufacturing facility in Mexicali and they haven't stopped growing since last five to six years. So I think it's a success story. And like that, it probably will be more in the electronic sector, but it will also be Plantronics, a big, big company that's growing so fast in Tijuana. But in aerospace, also we have Eaton, I don't know, Parker, so Zodiac Aerospace. And, and you don't need to give them all to me now, but I'm thinking if we could, perhaps we can share that with uh, the suppliers of, again, examples of companies who are based here, manufacturing here, keeping their jobs here, but have contracts over, um, over in Mexico. A supplier, we, we don't really know because we don't know. Sometimes a lot of companies keep it confidential. So, in the first um, mine, I don't know, right? But I need to look for it. But yeah, there's just a lot of companies they supply over there to Mexico, and yeah, they keep the jobs here in America and everything. But they supply over there in Mexico. I, if I may just add, uh, recently I was talking to a manufacturer that was based here, and as you are aware, with the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, there were some restrictions, and what the company ended up doing was relocating what was restricted to, to uh, Baja. And it was interesting because the company was at 30 employees and now is 100 employees. It's, it's using that comparative advantage and it's, it's a win-win. And the whole idea is to grow the company, not, not to relocate. That's, let me be very clear. Our focus is to get you to export, to provide your, your products and, ser and because we're so close, your manufacturing services. Because there are a lot of, well, well uh, to your point, Mexico is really, the aerospace is really moving forward, but there are still some key needs. If you have capabilities, it's all about speed to market and proximity. And as you said, it's, a, it's much easier to, to work in Mexico than it is to go to China. And if there's a problem, you can, you can take one day and, and go to the operation. And those teams work, and, and I will support Javier. Um, I've been on maybe five or six of these tours now, and I do speak Spanish. I will say good morning, maybe one or two sentences, and the whole day is in English. So, uh, you know, that's, it, it, language is, is not an issue. And, and there's a, a collaboration, and I just wanted to follow up also. You had mentioned the, you've heard, you probably haven't heard, the Calibaja region. The goal is to position California and the Baja industrial sector as one mega region and then globalize that, which, which provides opportunity for all of us. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think it's still concept oriented, but there's, there's tremendous opportunity there. No, uh, Kali Baja, it's already an association. 
it has an office in San Diego, and we're really uh, since probably six years now. They're working together. Baja California and California, and we promote the mega region internationally. We sometimes participate in New York and MedWest, MDM, East, MDM, the medical, MDM device, medical show. device, also in some uh, farm board, also international aerospace event in, in England. We also participate together as a Cali Baja mega region, and also the Paris Air Show. Uh, last year, I think, or last two years, we participate with the government and the governors and everybody, and we work together in the Cali Baja Mega Region, right? We promote uh, the Mega Region together. And just so you know, uh, the Maquila, the, that whole concept of the Maquila is, is foreign companies can have operations there. It, the, that product moves back out. It doesn't stay in the local economy. So that's one thing to, to be aware of. And, and then the other thing is um, you've, you've, just, you've got the opportunity for much more collaboration. And these companies are growing. As I said, if you're already doing business with one of these companies that already has an operation there, there's the, check to see if there's opportunity. Now I will share, as, uh, as many of you know, or if you're just getting started, the key is to develop relationships. So it's not, you can't, you, typically you can't go one time and then make a sale. It's gonna take a couple of times, but that's the beauty of being, you know, we're in Southern California and you're dealing with a major global player in, in uh, the Baja region because then, then it's a matter of, of one day. And so that's, that's tremendous opportunity and, and capabilities for our companies. So let me, let me re repeat the question so that the people who are watching at home can hear it because it's a great question. Um, what he was asking was how competitive can he be as a uh, supplier here when he's uh, putting out a quote for that $100 part? What is, who is he comp competing with and how, do, how can he, is it worth, worth his time and energy to um, enter into that market when he's set up with an overhead to operate um, in uh, Southern California? I, I would just share, in the export tech program, I'm glad you asked that question because one of the things that we work with the manufacturers is to fine tune their value proposition. So the clearer that that is, then, then you're gonna be better positioned overseas. And it's not, it, and, and also let me say in, in the US, it's all about price here, right? We have a lot of competition, quality is, is, is standard, so it's all about price. That's not necessarily the case in the global market. You know, it's not always about the lowest price. It's about the quality and the value that you bring. What I can what can I say is uh, probably here in America you you do that part for a hundred dollars right, but sometimes in the aerospace industry you have to do a different part with different different specifications with certification. So probably you're gonna focus on doing something different. Probably in Tijuana is more maquiladora, more same thing, fast, 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 very maquiladora, right? Probably here in the States is more innovation technology, a different kind of coding, a uh, different kind of part, very specific with certification. So I think those are the advantages of different, of the person doing it in Tijuana, right? Tijuana is like a lot of volume. Here in the States is more quality, more, more built to suit, I will say, right? Well, and I'll just say that also a lot of the a lot of your products that go that are integrated into into production or products in Mexico, what is exported from Mexico about forty percent uh, the the U.S. content is about forty percent. When you're talking about China, it's five percent. So there's a lot of U.S. content that is being integrated locally, and we need to take that into consideration. And now with the with the new. Uh a NAFTA program is called the U United States, uh, Mexico, and Canada Agreement. With that, we can work together because actually the content will be higher, I think, right? From the Mexico, Canada, and the United States. So with three contents probably bringing something from Mexico, something from Canada, you can export to England or all over the world. So we can obviously go in a lot deeper and that, that we're just barely scratching the surface of, of this opportunity. Um, we, we really believe that there's opportunities for our U.S.-based manufacturers to be suppliers to that, so, um, that opportunity down there, especially because of the precision components that they need and the type of parts that they're looking for. So again, we encourage you to reach out to Elizabeth, um, to us, and to um, learn more about this program. A lot of the materials will be available on the net. Um, we're going to post them via this. 
Um, and also, if you're curious about any of the other AMSOCAL programs, please reach out to us and we'd be happy to talk to you more about what AMSOCAL does and how we can help your uh, firm become more competitive. Tomas, may I just share? I just want to point out to you, notice the estimated annual market demand is $1.18 billion. What, what part of that can you pro provide? That's your opportunity.